How do you recognize God's purpose for your life? What signposts should we be looking for as we journey with God into fulfilling His dream for our lives? Today on Living Strong, you will learn the first four of nine signposts that will help you navigate into God's plan and purpose for your life. I was a happy homemaker bringing up two little kids when suddenly God woke me up with a dream that changed the direction of my life. The dream was a blueprint of a building plan and along with it came the impressions of what was to happen inside of it. It had four quadrants and the first quadrant was a coffee shop, a friendly coffee shop where we would build relationships and when the customer shared their problems, we would share Jesus with them. The second was an inspirational gift shop which was basically to promote positive values through different kinds of gifts. The third was an inspirational library with books and CDs and, um, what shall I say, audiovisual resources. And the fourth one was a chapel which was open to everyone to be refreshed and renewed. When this happened, I told God I had no money, no land, no building, but he could have me. And that was all God needed. So for the next 25 years, he refined me in the fire and opened out new areas for ministry. Um, the journey was not easy. The world ridiculed the plan of God and the family couldn't wait for years and years to see this happen. But God kept his word. Finally, on December 19th, uh, 2006, God helped the sanctuary team to open this project. Right now, it's, it's about the most exciting thing that's happened. Uh, just to see God transform lives. He brings in the people. He touches them and transforms them. We we just make friends with them and the rest is, is completely beyond us. And having seen this happen for five and a half years, we're just raring to go and want to open many more sanctuaries. The most important ingredient of the coffee shop, actually the whole sanctuary, is the presence of God. And we just stand aside and watch what He does. When the sanctuary opened, um, it was nothing but God showing us miracles of His grace day after day that helped us to become what we are right now. Pastor Ashish was with us from day one and I want to thank APC and Pastor Ashish and family for the support that they have been to us over the past few years. It's um, it's wonderful to have friends and family and the church with you on this journey. It's just God all the way, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And how do we go about discovering that plan and discovering that purpose in our lives and what does it take for us to fulfill? See that plan of God fulfilled in our lives. There are places that God wants you to go. There are people that God wants you to meet. There are lives that God wants you to touch and things that God wants you to do. Things that he has planned for you to accomplish here on earth.
We've been talking about uh, fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. And uh, as we began this series of studying together, we established the fact that God has a plan, that God has a purpose for each one of our lives. We've been designed by God to fulfill a very specific plan and purpose for our lives. As I said earlier, God has places that He wants you to go. There are people that God wants you to meet. There are lives that God wants you to touch. There are things that God wants you to accomplish here on earth. And living this kind of a life, a life that is filled with divine purpose, what we call as a life dream, is the life that brings the greatest satisfaction to any one of us. It is a life that brings the greatest sense of fulfillment, that I'm living for a higher purpose, a divine purpose, God's dream for my life. And it is the life that we, call, we, we can say is the great adventure as you journey with God. But the question that all of us would ask is, how do I discover God's plan for my life? Yes, I believe that God designed me for a purpose uh, because that's the nature of God. He does things with plan and purpose. The question is, how do I discover the plan of God? How do I recognize God's plan? We said earlier that the unfolding of God's plan for our life is progressive. And uh, we must be convinced in our hearts, according to the Word of God, that it is possible for you and me to understand the plan and purpose of God. Although it's going to happen progressively, it's going to happen over a period of time, it is possible for us as individuals to know very clearly that this is the plan, the purpose, the dream that God has for my life and what I must do to walk in it. You know, many of us have this wrong idea that the will of God is so mysterious, probably too mysterious for us to understand. But that's not what the Scriptures teach us. For instance, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 15 through 17, it says, you know, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 17, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The Bible is telling us, don't be unwise, but understand the, what the will of the Lord is. Meaning that the will of the Lord can be understood. We can discover, we can understand the will of God. Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 says, Paul is praying for the believers at Colossae and he prays for them. He says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Notice what he's praying for them. He's saying, I'm praying for you to be filled with the knowledge of his will. So it is possible for us believers to be filled with the knowledge of God's will, of of what he has planned and purpose for our lives. But it requires wisdom and spiritual understanding to, uh, to know his will. And what will be the result of knowing his will? He continues in verse 10. He says, I'm praying this for you in order that... Verse 10, you may walk worthy of the Lord. So it's important to know His will, to be filled with the knowledge of His will, so that we could walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So here's another very important thing, that for us to be fruitful in every good work, it begins when we are filled with the knowledge of His will. So as you're filled with knowing God's will, and you go about doing that, you're going to be fruitful in every good work, in everything that you put your hands to. And you will continue to increase in the knowledge of God. And he prays for them in verse 11, that they will be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. So it is in the fulfilling of God's will that we can tap into the strength we need, the power we need, and keep increasing in strength, spiritual strength and power to keep fulfilling his will. He strengthens us to fulfill His will. You know, Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. He said, Things which eyes haven't seen, which ears haven't heard, which has not entered into the heart of man, such things God has prepared for those who love Him. 
But he didn't stop there. He continues in verse 10 and he says, But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. So the things that God has planned for you, He also reveals to you by His Holy Spirit. It is not that God plans these great things for you and me and keeps them as an eternal mystery that you and I could never discover it. But rather God plans these wonderful things which eyes haven't seen, which ears haven't heard, which has never even entered in the heart of man. God prepares such things and then He reveals them to us by His Holy Spirit. So then we could then walk in those things. So we must understand that it is possible for us to recognize the plan and purpose of God. And as we journey with Him step at a time, He begins to unveil, unfold, uh, and reveal his will progressively. So in our study, as we progress in the study on ful fulfilling God's purpose for your life, I, I will be sharing with us nine ways that I have found useful that, that helps us discover the plan and purpose of God, that helps us recognize the plan and purpose of God. And uh, uh, these are nine ways that I have found useful as signposts, as, as guideposts to us, and God would use any number of these at different points in life, to reveal His plan, to reveal His purpose to us uh, as we journey with Him. The first most important signpost or guidepost in, in, in recognizing God's purpose is to recognize the general teaching and instruction of God's Word. All of God's guidance must be evaluated and judged and assessed by the teaching of His Holy Word. Because God will never violate His Word. While God is not limited to His written Word, because obviously God is infinitely greater than the revelation that we have of Him, God will never violate what He has revealed. He will never contradict the truth that He has revealed. Although He Himself as truth is much, much greater, infinitely beyond what has been revealed to us. The things that are revealed to us are a finite portion of who God is. He Himself is infinite. Today's teaching is an excerpt from the free publication called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You can download this free publication for your personal study from our church website, www.apcwo. Dot org, or request a free printed copy by sending an email to tv at apcwo.org. Our website also has several other free resources, including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and other free publications that you can download and use. The fact remains that God will never violate the truth He has revealed to us. So as we journey to discover and recognize the purpose of God, our way of assessing the guidance that we receive is to judge it in the truth that has been revealed to us in His Word. Paul teaches us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. He says, All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is useful for doctrine, which is for teaching, for reproof, that is to bring conviction, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or instruction in right living. So God's Word instructs us in right living, showing us the way in which we must go. And as we follow the instruction of God's Word and are nurtured by God's Word, He continues in verse 17, that we are made complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the, the leading of God's Word is always uh, in agreement with His written Word. Paul teaches us in Romans 12, 2, he says that as we renew our minds, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewed mind is able to understand, is able to prove, know clearly the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So what is a renewed mind? It's a mind that has that is learning on to take on God's thoughts and God's ways. That's the renewed mind, a mind that is being transformed by the truth of God's Word. So a mind that is renewed by the Word of God is able to clearly understand the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. 
We are taught in Ephesians 5.10 that we must find out what is acceptable to the Lord. We must find out, examine, test and see what is acceptable to the Lord. So as believers, we can understand what is acceptable to the Lord by His Word. The teaching of God's Word in different areas of life are very important for us as a starting point in recognizing God's plan and God's will. For instance, when it comes to marriage, the Word of God is very clear in what it teaches us. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So as you're, as you're trying to discover, recognize whom you should marry, here is the starting point. Recognize the general instruction and teaching of God's Word. His Word teaches us that we cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Or when it comes to doing things in life, we cannot get into something that's unrighteous and say, God is leading me to do that. No. God leads us always into righteousness. Psalm 23 verse 3, very familiar verse. The psalmist says, He leads me in the paths of righteousness. If the paths are not leading into righteousness, we cannot claim that God is leading us down that path. So the general teaching of God's Word is very important for us uh, in recognizing the plan and purpose of God. It starts there. Now we move on into some other very subjective or very personal signposts or guideposts that you and I need to apply or could apply in our lives that will help us recognize the plan and purpose of God. The second signpost that I find useful is to recognize the seeds in your life. The kingdom of God operates like this. God begins things as a small, as, as a, in seed form. He starts things out like a seed. And then the seed, when it's sown, it begins to grow and then it begins to produce the fruit that God originally intended for it to produce. Jesus taught about this in many of his parables. He said, the kingdom of God is like this. As if a man should sow seed into the ground, it shall sleep and rise night and day and time will pass. And the seed springs up and it produces. So the kingdom of God often operates in seed form. So we need to recognize that God works in our lives in a similar fashion, in seed form. He deposits things in our lives as as seed. And then as we recognize the seed and, 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 and nurture it, it then grows into producing something that God has ordained for our lives. So what, what do I mean by a seed? It is anything that God put in your life which is an indicator of your divine destiny. These are seeds of divine destiny, that things that may shape your life or influence you in a certain way. These seeds could be dreams that you had as a child. These seeds could be a recognition of special interests early on in life. It could be people that God has placed in your life that come into your life at certain stages and they speak certain things in your life or influence you in a, cer- in a certain way. These seeds could be opportunities, unusual opportunities that have opened up for you that may not have opened up for someone else. God set it up in your life. That's a seed. And you need to recognize it. The reason that you have the opportunity else, whereas someone else doesn't get it is because that is opportunity is a seed that God has placed in your life. And like this, there could be dreams or prophetic words that are released, which are all indicators of things to come. So I encourage you to take some time and reflect and look back in your life and see, you know, have there been seeds that God has been sowing in my life? Maybe I failed to recognize it. Maybe they came into my life at certain points. People came in. Opportunities came in. Maybe I didn't recognize it and take a hold of it. But these seeds are indicators of divine destiny. A third area, a third important guidepost that I would like to share with us is to recognize the stirring inside of us, the stirring within. Many times when God is leading you into something, in some direction, it begins by a deep stirring in your heart. The problem, the circumstance, the situation that agitates you 
is very often the very problem you're called to solve. And it is in solving that problem you would discover God's dream and God's purpose for your life. There are several biblical examples of this. For example, Nehemiah was a young man. He was taken away into captivity uh, uh, in Babylon. He heard about the broken walls of Jerusalem. And unlike Nehemiah, there were many other people who obviously knew that Jerusalem was in ruins. The city was in ruins. The walls had been broken down. Several others heard about the same thing, but it did not affect them. Unlike Nehemiah. When Nehemiah heard about this, the Bible says he was stirred inside to do something about it. And then he began to pray, and then God began to open up doors. He found favor in the eyes of the king, and the king not only gave him favor, but gave him all the resources, the materials that he needed to go back to Jerusalem and see the walls rebuilt. That was Nehemiah's destiny or life dream being fulfilled. But it began as a stirring inside his heart. So what is stirring inside you? What are the things that are around you that cause a reaction inside you? That's a sign of a problem that you may be called to solve. What is it that stirs up inside you that you dream about, that you want to address in your life? Recognize the stirring. Because many times God shapes, forms, and influences these inner heart feelings as a way to move you into the direction that He wants you to go. The fourth one and the last one that we will do today, the fourth signpost that we want to talk about is to recognize the grace and the gift that God has given you. When God created you, He designed you for something. And at the time that He designed you, He also released grace and gift into you so that you will be fully qualified, fully capable of fulfilling that dream and that purpose for your life. Now, you and I may not have rec necessarily recognized or discovered all of that. They may be uh, lying latent inside of us, those, those gifts, those graces, those areas of skills and capabilities. They may be lying latent in us, but nevertheless, the truth is that inside you are, is all the grace and all the gift that is needed to be the person God called you to be, to fulfill what God has designed you to fulfill. And so, as you experiment, as you expose yourself to various situations in life, as you take on assignments and begin to do them, you'll begin to recognize the gift and the grace that God has given to you. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7 talks about this. He says, To each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. To each one there is grace given in relation to the gift that has been given to you by Jesus Christ. So each one of us carries grace and gift inside of us. And we need to discover this so that we can then go about fulfilling the purpose of God. God's call on your life. God's plan for your life, God's dream for your life is surely connected to the grace and the gift that resides within you. His grace and gift is always in alignment with His purpose for your life. And as you begin to flow in the grace and the gift towards that purpose, you'll find His power working. That's where the power of God flows in your life and my life. When our grace and our gifting is aligned to His purpose, He releases His power. That's where we are most effective in fulfilling the plan and purpose of God. Today's teaching is an excerpt from the free publication called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You can download this free publication for your personal study from our church website www.apcwo.org or request a free printed copy by sending an email to tv at apcwo.org. Our website also has several other free resources, including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and other free publications that you can download and use. The Holy Spirit speaks to us time and again, bearing witness in our spirit. He prompts us. Sometimes it comes either as a feeling of peace, saying go ahead with it, some, with the decision you're about to make, 
Or it could be a restlessness inside you that says, that makes you very uncomfortable about the feeling, about the choice you're going to make. Very often in life when we, are, uh, when we have to make choices and decisions, uh, it, it's, it's very useful to go and speak to someone who has a history with God, who's been walking with God over a period of time, people who are mature, who have, who have uh, you know, experience, who have an experience with God. God works in our lives according to times and seasons. He orchestrates times and seasons in our lives, and, and God works by that. Um, God uh, executes things at the right time, in the right season. We must keep in mind that not every circumstance we face necessarily is orchestrated by God. Because some of the circumstances we face could be just the consequence of our own actions, our own choices, something that we've created in our own lives. What we find in the Bible is that God sets up certain ways, recurring patterns that He works, in which He works in our lives. And if you become sensitive to the patterns in which God works in your life, it helps you recognize what, you're going to, what God is expecting of you to do next. Thank you for watching Living Strong today. It's our joy to be able to come and share God's Word with you. We've been talking about fulfilling God's purpose for your life and how you could recognize God's purpose for your life. We'd really love to hear from you and know how this program's encouraged you and blessed your life. Also, make sure to request the free resource made available to you, the free publication. Visit our website. You'll get free downloads of other teachings, our messages, uh, publications that you could have access to for free. And I want to pray with you before we close today. Just pray that God will release revelation into your life so that you can begin discovering and recognizing God's plan and purpose. Let's just pray together. Join me right where you are right, uh, as we pray together. Father, we just pray for those watching. Uh, we pray, God, that by your Holy Spirit, you will release a revelation of how they can recognize your plan, your purpose for their life. God, we pray that they will begin to see these things which they have heard operate and begin to work in their lives and lead them, Lord, on this journey of seeing your plan fulfilled. We pray your blessing on each one in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to sharing with you our next episode.